Good evening and uh, welcome to tonight's uh, City Council meeting. Today is March the 17th, 2020. The time is now 6.03 p.m. Uh, city Council meeting is, in, is being held in the City Council chambers with uh, remote uh, City Council members in their individual homes. So uh, for those that are out in the public that are listening to this uh, broadcast, we apologize for having to bring this uh, meeting to you in this in this way. However, due to the current circumstances that we have, uh, we're fortunate that uh, our staff has been able to at least come up with this, uh, you know, at least this way that we can at least continue to do business. So uh, let's go ahead and, and we'll rise to have uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Good. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. And, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, Audra, are you down there that you could have a roll call? Here. Uh, guys, what we're going to do tonight is uh, I will I will go ahead and so that everybody can like I usually we usually have is input with any discussion that we have and I'll start with what I usually do going start with Mr. Matei, Ms. Grego, Ms. Of course Frank is not here, Ms. Ogletree, Mr. Goodall, and Mr. Williamson so that everyone can have an opportunity to at least uh, speak up if you have any any opinions. Okay, any uh, approval of the agenda? Does anyone have any changes to the agenda? Could have a motion. So moved. Have a, have a second. 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 Call the vote, please. Roger, would you call the vote on that? That's Kimberly. Oh, Kimberly, would you call the vote? For everyone, for everyone that, for everyone that could hear me out there, could, could you please uh, mute your, uh, mute your audio? Otherwise, we're getting a lot of feedback. You want us to mute our audio? Yes. Yeah, and those, until they want to speak. When you, when you want to speak, uh, then unmute. I'll mute the microphone. Mute the microphone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, item number three, policies, items, and staff reports. Mike, you want to give us something on the COVID coronavirus considerations? Yes, hoping everybody could hear me as well. Um, just uh, as part of uh, what the city is doing, we're working in conjunction with the health department. And so you know, we have a daily briefing call with, uh, with the health department and they give us updates and on that call is Mount San Rafael Hospital, Spanish Peaks Health in Walsenburg, all the emergency managers from both uh, Huerfano and Los Animas, the sheriff, the police, the fire, um, Los Animas County is on there, Huerfano County and all the area school districts. So we're there keeping us up to date on all the guidance and uh, um, you know, updates on the spread of, of this virus. Um, the last update as of four o'clock yesterday, the cases in Colorado was 183 with 20 hospitalized and two deaths. Um, just tonight I got on, online and we're already at 213 so it is, uh, it is spreading. Um, New Mexico has 23, uh, and of course the U.S. is way up there. Uh, they, uh, they mentioned the uh, 
Cohalp number for information. It's a CAN number that Colorado um, has, and they are uh, that number for you and for the public is 877 462 2911. It is kind of a canned. Uh, you, you select, uh, you know, numbers and it kind of gives you a canned message. Today, I got a, uh, received a website from the state that is much better and very informative. That is COVID-19, C-O-V-I-D-19 dot Colorado dot gov. And that's for, for everybody on the line here. It's a, it's a good website. Um, gives a lot of information and um, the uh, it, it, it's just chock full of information helpful uh, wanting to let you know what we did as a city we closed the welcome center uh, that's a lot of traveling public that's staffed by uh, elderly uh, we closed the welcome center we've closed the library we've closed the community center and we've uh, closed City Hall to appointments only. Um, if you can do your business online or by phone, we appreciate it. Um, otherwise, if, if you have to come in, uh, we ask that they public call for an appointment and, and we let people in. Um, we're practicing you know, the, the uh, social distancing that's recommended. We're avoiding face-to-face -face, uh, contact as much as possible. We're washing our hands, you know, we're wiping down hourly, so that's all going on in City Hall. Utilities, we're, we've uh, allowed people to pay online, over the phone, or in the Dropbox. Um, we have uh, finally figured out that a way to waive the credit card fees. So for credit card fees are waived for those wishing to pay online and... and um, they, uh, it's for, you know, a couple months as we, uh, or until advised by the health department that things have changed and we can start opening our doors again. Uh, the police department is working on uh, uh, website reporting for non-emergencies. Um, you know, everybody is stretched in with all this and, and, and we want to do our best to uh, not uh, spread the virus, so we're we're following all the protocols of the CDC and the health department. Um, there's been some questions on, uh, yeah, as you know, the governor shut down all uh, restaurants and pubs and bars and everything uh, to help with that. Um, there's been uh, some question on dispensaries. We've re requested information from the health department and guidance there, and they are talking to the state. We know a lot of people come in from out of town. I'm, I'm sorry, what? There you go, you're back on. Could you repeat what the last couple of sentences, please? You kind of went to auto mute. Ah, okay, so what I was talking about was the marijuana dispensaries and asking the health department for guidance and they're talking with the state not sure what the governor is going to do with the dispensaries uh, people have been calling in with questions because there's a lot of out-of-town travel uh, to our town and um, th there's concern there so we're, we're asking for guidance and protocols on that and uh, with that being said uh, we're also asking about the medical uh, side of the dispensaries because uh, people are using that instead of opioids for um, you know pain management and such so waiting for guidance on that um, in your packet there was uh, a pretty good uh, package from uh, the CDC um, uh, it, it gives a lot of the regulations on what people are doing. This is a, a fluid situation, so it, it's um, we're trying to keep up, we're trying to manage, um, we're trying to do everything we can. 
Um, there has also been, you know, some some questions about businesses and and what are they going? <coughs> excuse me, what are they going to do with uh, their employees? The, the shut down. The state is working for a uh, quicker um, unemployment uh, turnaround for those that are out of jobs for the businesses themselves. Um, they have uh, opened up the SBDC and SBA uh, offices for online applications. And I believe uh, Wally Wallace is on. Wally, are you there? And can you speak to the to what you're doing with economic development and trying to help these businesses get through this? Yeah, I, I've just been reaching out to folks and trying to at least get everybody linked in together. Um, I've been uh, speaking with some of the folks from OEdit and from Startup Colorado who have been providing some resources. As you already touched on, SBA and SBDC are offering low interest loans uh, that the whole process is really expedited right now because of the current crisis. Um, there's new stuff coming before me all the time. Actually, Andrew Schneider, I see, is in this meeting as well, and he just sent me an interesting one less than an hour ago of more uh, low and no interest loan opportunities for some businesses. But at this point, we're still just kind of waiting to see what the federal and state governments will start releasing as far as support to help uh, the local businesses that are struggling through all this. Um, also, if you look in the messages right now, Andrew just provided a link to some of the services that are being provided by the government right now, um, or the state government. And we've been working with uh, Nisha at the chamber um, on this project they've been doing to get restaurant information out to the public. And basically, we're just trying to figure out what kind of support we can offer. Um, I will say in the long run, I don't know how long term this will affect us and I think we might need to be aware at some point that we might need to provide some sort of support for these businesses that are struggling. So I just want to let you all know that that might be something we need to consider in the future. I, I also do want to touch on the fact a few weeks ago when I gave my report to you all, I spoke briefly about Jeff Peterson and I, and I who have been working on a revolving loan fund. And, and we have been in touch with Colorado Lending Source over the past two days, and we're really ready to move forward on that possibly. So you'll be hearing from us very soon on that. Thank you, Wally. Um, so there's, there's a lot of information coming from the CDC, from the U.S. government, from the health department, um, but we had a staff meeting today on this platform. Um, it seemed to work well. Uh, we'll get used to it, but basically they've been told if you feel sick, stay, stay home. Um, we'll work with you on your sick leave and, and you won't need doctor's slips for if you need to stay longer, out longer in a couple days. Uh, if your children are sick, keep them home. If someone in your household is tested positive, keep the entire household home. Just going down the list, if you're an older person, consider self-isolation. Uh, self um, and those with underlying health conditions, that's who it seems to be affecting. So we're, we're trying to be proactive and, and help employees every, in every way we can. Um, and of course, city business <coughs> continues on, but uh, we've asked the department heads to trim where they can because this is affecting you know our our revenues because a lot of our uh, tax uh, retail sales are being shut down um, so we're monitoring that very closely and we've got some you know essential items that we have to do but non-essential we are um, doing our best the staff and the department heads to uh, curb the spending until we see where this goes. So, um, with that, 
I think that's where we are, and I'll, I'll turn it back to you there. Okay, thank you. Uh, on to uh, item four, petitions or communications, oral or written. Of course, we don't have anything here tonight unless Mr. Murphy has something to say. Um, no. <clears throat> on to item number five, our consent agenda. All right. Council, you will notice that I have asked Audra to put all of the appointments in the consent agenda because we didn't want to have all of these people being able to tie in or be here. So I put the her to put them in on our consent agenda. So I'll read those off as we go along. So item, our, uh, item 5A, approval of the regular meeting minutes of March the 3rd, 2020, and special meeting minutes of March the 9th, 2020. Approval of the bills for $1,694,231.95. Item C, approval of a special event permit, malt, venuous, and spirituous application filed by Arthur Roy Mitchell Memorial Incorporated at 150 East Main Street for March the 28th, April the 18th, May the 24th, May the 30th, July the 18th, and October the 31st, and December the 4th, 2020. Item D, approval of reappointment of Gabriel Moreno to the Los Angeles County E91 Authority Board. Item E, approval of appointment of Jenna Clark to the Carnegie <coughs> Public Library Advisory Board. Item F, approval of appointment of Gary Watson and Chad Kraft to the Space to Create Commons Oversight Board. Item G, approval of appointment of David Bragg to the Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority Commission. And item H, approval of the payroll March 7th, 2020 through March, 2020, March 20th, 2020 to March 21, 2020 through April 3rd, 2020 in the amount of $365,707.98. And I don't know if so you guys will all have to unmute or not uh, need a motion. No move. Second. Second. Call a vote, please. That's true. That is correct. Yes. Okay, on to item six, public hearings. Six A, public hearing for consideration of an ordinance prohibiting prohibiting hemp cultivation operations and other hemp agricultural operation within the city of Trinidad's corporate limits. <coughs> Hearing is now open. Les, do you have anything to, uh, to add to this? Mayor, council members, good evening. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so um, as you all know, this is the second reading of the public hearing uh, for this matter. This ordinance was deemed necessary uh, to, as, as I've mentioned previously, to preserve the uh, retail and medical marijuana cultivation industries within the city of Trinidad. As we have uh, discussed, basically any hemp uh, actively being cultivated within the city of Trinidad could potentially contaminate, contaminate uh, flowering marijuana. And so that is why we have felt this ordinance is necessary and I uh, am, am standing you know, by to answer any questions that you may have. Any uh, discussion from council? If you want to, if you want to say something, go ahead and unmute and then uh, speak up. Starting with Mr. Matei. I, I, I'm unmuted. I have nothing to contribute. Okay, Miss uh, Bisgrego. Regarding that correspondence we got uh, regarding the building, yes. So what the, the people are asking us asking us is to govern something outside the city limits of Trinidad. Is that what I understand? I I agree. I mean, 
Ms. Ogletree? Ms. Ogletree? Only, can you hear me? Yes. I've only had a chance to read through uh, what we got this afternoon one time, and I wasn't, I didn't grasp what the point they carried just was bringing up that they were trying to legislate something else about our city limits. Uh, um, But I, I guess what I think is that they're going to inside um, that it shouldn't be a problem and that perhaps we should make an exception for those kinds of uh, production facilities. I mean, and because of what they're saying, as far as I'm concerned, is true that as long as there are no male plants that they're working with, then they can't pollinate to female THC produced plants um, in the same way that uh, growers have a lot of for that as well because they just want to know plants. So I thought it was a bunch of, I, as best I could understand, they seem to be making a good point. And I thought we should take a look at what they were saying a little more closely. And I would say, I would ask council to go forward on this ordinance and to then consider if anyone does have a um, proposal for indoor hemp cultivation that they want to come forward with, then an exception could be made um, to the existing ordinance. Cultivating hemp um, is the kind of thing that requires a lot of room, a lot of space. <coughs> and I will tell you, Councilwoman Only Tree, a lot of the, the filtration systems will not um, protect from what what will be pollinated. That is, um, things can come in from outside. The filtration goes outside. I understand your point of what you just said, but I don't know that we have any assurances that hemp cultivators, if there was an indoor hemp cultivation facility, that all male plants would be pulled. I don't think we have any assurance that if there were male plants, um, that that if they were allowed to uh, to exist, that the male plants that they wouldn't be able to get outside of the filtration system and, and contaminate any nearby roads. So I, I would just suggest that this ordinance I think is still necessary to ensure that we don't have um, hemp cultivation facilities. Uh, but again, if they want to have an indoor hemp grow, they could perform it. They could do that at any time. Um, that they were feeling ready to go forward with a hemp cultivation facility proposal. Does that is this, it does. Um, is the folks Colorado Processing LLC who sent this letter, or do they have an active growth going on in Trinidad right now that's producing them? I, I do not believe there are any current hemp cultivation facilities. Okay. At all, and I think if there were, we have um, a problem. But no, I don't believe they have a current health hemp cultivation facility in Trinidad. Okay. The only other comment I was going to make is that when I was up at the um, the marijuana update in Pueblo, I asked uh, some of the people up there who work in the hemp processing field about our proposed five mile kind of is that a safe distance and they basically told me they don't know that it could be 10 it could be 15 they really don't know there isn't any study that's been done that will guarantee that a distance of five, five miles is safe enough so and, and i understand that and i think i mentioned before um we were beginning with a discussion of that and of course that is in here but Instead, we also just said no head cultivation. Facilities within the state. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, on to uh, Mr. Goodall, you have any uh, questions? 
Un Dieu. Un Dieu. Un Dieu. Well, I was, I just wanted to let Les know that he was breaking up and I held my hand to my ear because I, uh, oh. but, um, also that I believe that uh, Department of Ag, you have to register uh, hemp with the Department of Ag. I could be wrong, but uh, go ahead, Councilman Goodall. So I think we should move forward too with the case to case. I think with the way the winds blow around here, one male plant could literally cost the pros that we have for this place millions and millions of dollars in the name on our tax revenue. I mean, we would definitely need to get the assurance for non cross pollination, you know, for male marijuana plants as it is with the hemp plants. It takes one plant in a good minute to totally pollinate a whole plant. And, and you know, being to the table of the cost, so I think we need to take every protection possible to protect our growth that we have. Okay, was that all that you had, uh, Mr. Goodall? Yes, sir, that's all I have. Okay. <clears throat> On to uh, Mr. Williamson. Do you have any comment? Yes. I, I was just going to 
thinking that their uh, syndrome that Elder Gel was uh, just female plants in an indoor facility for commercial purposes. Uh, that that's also a vinyl industry that could develop in the city here. And uh, my opinion that uh, there should be some sort of uh, uh, regulation with us exemptions for such Go ahead. Elder Gels will like Zuko. Am I just look? If there was a proposal for an indoor head cultivation facility that involved only female plants, then I would say that would be something that a potential applicant should come forward with any kind of uh, you know bu business proposal and let us know. And I think everyone would be more than happy to look at that and carve out an exception to this ordinance. I will just tell the council that this is necessary, especially as we're coming up on our next uh, growing season. And as we said, hemp growing in the city or in close proximity to the city limits would ruin both outdoor and indoor marijuana cultivation facilities. So I, I think everybody's always happy to look at any kind of business proposal, but this is kind of a necessary prophylaxis to try and avoid head cultivation uh, that, that could contaminate marijuana. Uh, one other person on uh, is Janet Clark. Ms. Clark, are you out there? Do you have a, did you have a comment on the hemp growing? No, I don't. I'm just okay. listening. Okay. With, with that being, I guess uh, there's no one else to speak for or against. Uh, the hearing is closed. Uh, item 6A1, second reading Mayor, of... Mayor. Hold on. Yes. Mayor. Yes. Mayor. Yes. I know that there are people online that want to speak regarding this. Okay, yeah, Mr. Peterson, go ahead. Yes, good evening. I hope I'm not feeding back uh, like we had earlier. Um, I, I'm, I'm with Colorado Process. Uh, we also support uh, a proposal that would uh, assist this in uh, uh, causing no profit uh, on the cannabis plants and hemp plants. Uh, our facility. You might want to comment after Mike. Yeah, I I don't have anything at this time, Mayor. No. Uh, Les, would you have any comment? Well, Mayor, any of that would be fine, and I, I would just say that I don't know that there's a necessity for uh, growing clones within the city limits. I mean, we would want to have compliance 
think that students can be able to monitor anything that is going on if there is any hemp cultivation, even if it's for, for clones or for um, small plants, we would want to be able to have a if you will, a regulatory gin, you know, with, with hemp clones, for lack of a better term, and to get those as long as they agree that they're going to export them to like Mr. Peterson said, way out of the county. That'd be fine, but right now, uh, we, we simply need to ensure that we have uh, no, no cross-examination or cross-pollination of hemp with marijuana in the city limits. So I, I think we will be more than accommodating to do anything we can to help a fledgling industry as long as we're able to get uh, the assurances of being able to be controlled any kind of hemp, hemp production so that there isn't the possibility of flowering hemp. Okay. Is there anyone else uh, online that would like to speak? I'll go ahead and repeat. Is there anybody else online that would like to speak? Um, Anthony Matei is holding up a sign he wants to talk. Ants, go ahead. Anthony, go ahead. Mr. Matei? You're muted. Councilman Matei, you're muted. I think. I'm muted. Okay, I'm cool. I think. I, I appreciate everyone's concern, and particularly the entrepreneurs who want me to establish a hemp farm situation. I, 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 I recognize that. I see the benefits. However, we have already in place a million dollar industry. Sure did. Okay, I'm off. Okay. Anybody else out there that would like to speak on the hemp? Doug Peterson? Yes, let's 
too loud. It, it is kind of like buying a used car. You should always have a, a check in the bin and all that kind of stuff first before just because somebody tells you it's a good car. You understand what I'm trying to say? I don't mean to oversimplify the point, but that's where I, my head is right now. Okay. Any anybody else? Anybody else have comments? Yes. Let's go ahead. Okay, I do have a comment uh, that I wanted to make, and uh, we did get a comment back from uh, uh, Mr. Peterson asking that, that we have additional information on this before we move forward, but I think we need to move forward with this regardless. You know, we can always amend this, and I think if uh, we want to open this up to uh, any additional com information, uh, I think in the future that might be the, the time, and rather than now, uh, you know, we can always amend this. It's, it's like I said, these, these ordinances are not set in stone. They're made to be amended if necessary. And I think that's maybe that's the direction that we need to go with this. Uh, any, uh, anybody have any comment on that? If not, let's go ahead and close out the hearing finally. Okay, item 6A1, second reading of an ordinance prohibiting hemp cultivation operations and other hemp agriculture operation within the city of Trinidad's corporate limits. Uh, have a motion, please. So moved. A second? Second. Any other discussion? Uh, Audra, would you call a vote, please? Some reason or other it says here Williams. Yeah, you guys Councilman Williams who just sent me a text saying that his internet just went out. So I think we just lost him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I'll I, I, I vote aye. Okay, item seven, unfinished business. We have none. Item 8, miscellaneous business, consideration of creative district memorandum of understanding. Could I have a motion? So moved. Have a second? Second. Discussion? Mr. Matei. Uh, no, no, nothing intelligent. Okay, Ms. Gregel. When I was looking for this this afternoon, and yeah, you know, I keep looking over things, and it's it's very hard to make a decision on anything involving the city because you've got the shadow of what's going to happen to our economy behind us. And I I look through the MOU, and there is nothing financial. There are no dollar amounts in there that I'm. Just, I'm just truly afraid that I, you know, first of all, we're trying to encumber funds that aren't mentioned in here for the council of 2021. And I, you know, I, I'm okay with the MOU, but I just, you know, if you guys thought I was conservative before, you ain't seen nothing yet, because I'm going to be ultra financially uh, conservative now, but 
just keep that in mind when we I'm not opposed to it. I just want to mention that to you all. Okay, Ms. Ogletree. I think it's a helpful thing for the uh, creative district to have a memorandum of understanding with the city. This took a long time to prepare, and uh, it's been run by the city attorney and, and gotten input from him. Um, the problem has been before now that it was an awkward dance where both sides weren't exactly sure what they were supposed to be doing, and this just lays down what everybody's job is. And, and that's very helpful to the creative district as it tries to move forward and put into place what we've asked them to do. So I, I, I fully support it. Okay, Mr. Goodall. I'm in support of it. I have no further comments besides that. Okay, Mr. Williamson. We're talking about the creative district member MOU. The only comment that I had is I looked over it and there was a second part in there and I wish uh, because of the com I'm using my own computer here. Uh, I was a little concerned that the recommendations. Let's see, hold on. Uh, let's see, okay. Mike just brought these to me. Uh, bear with me. The city obligation to be completed as soon as practicable. Um, for us, okay, that assist in directing potential exhibit event workshop providers to the district, and for us to manage the commercial space leases, um, and continuing to assist in maintaining the project, including facilities and amenities. Now, I can understand most of those, the um, item C and D, which is assist in the potential exhibit event providers, and um, to manage commercial lease spaces. Uh, Mike, do you have any particular thoughts on those two items? Those are the two things that caused me a little concern where I thought that the organization uh, was going to take care of a lot of this. We'll try this. Yeah, um, is it all right if I chime in on this? Sure. This is Molly. Um, our, by the organization, do you mean art space? No, no, I'm talking about the, uh, the, uh, uh, creative, district. the creative district. That, because you know, I, I, I uh, don't, I don't think that we should be. I don't think that we should be the ones that are going out having to look for people to fill these event spaces and doing these events. That should be their responsibility. I mean, that's what I read here. I'm not, yeah. I may be wrong. Yeah. We do have it there that, and actually I don't even have a copy of it right in front of me, um, but I'm pretty positive that it is written in there that they are in charge of the management of events in that space, but that we basically will continue to try and direct people in their way. As for the leasing agreements, I have actually been told since I first stepped into this position that that would be one of the main roles of my role with economic development as to overlook these spaces. Um, I have been speaking with Mike and Andre about the possibility of bringing in a leasing uh, entity to help us do that, but um, I, yeah, I've been told since I first started that that would be one of the things that would be the responsibility of us as the city was to work on filling that space. And we've also been working on some creative ways to do that while turning the uh, space into an economic development incubator. Um, that is also some information I shared with Mike and Audra that I was looking forward to bringing to you all in the near future. Um, but that's just what I'd have to say in regards to those two concerns. But everything else within this MOU, I would say this is stuff that we think should have been agreed on verbally for a very long time. Uh, creative District has been really essential in seeing this project through 
and it's just we want to make sure that it's on paper that we will return their um, time and efforts that they've given to us through this project by providing them with a uh, space to set up their offices. Okay, so what, so what you're saying in the course it does say this the city staff obligations of the city the city staff assigned to this project will serve as primary point of contact with the local community and the media. So basically that does put you in charge uh, along with the uh, oversight uh, commission in trying to make sure that these spaces are filled and, uh, and leasing them out, is that correct? That's the way I'm looking at these, these obligations. It's a joint operation? Yeah. Yes, that is. Do you see that? That is correct. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Yes, and, and it is the commons area which is leased by the city um, so okay. we we would have okay. control. Just, just wanted to just wanted to go ahead and, and uh, you know make that uh, make that clear. Any other uh, any other comments from council? Okay, I think did we get a motion on that? We did. Okay, uh, call the vote, please. Yes. Call call the vote, please. Yes. Item 8, 8B, consideration of uh, purchase of two trucks for the police department. We have one vehicle for $32,145. Second uh, item on there is $44,490. And that's a total package of $76,635. Uh, being that it was a state contract, it was not necessary to go out to bid. Could I have a motion, please? Second. Second. Council discussion, Mr. Bate. Uh, my only question is: Are these additional vehicles, additional vehicles, or replacement vehicles? Mike. Sorry, trying to turn my audio on. Um, Charlie uh, is online and he could speak to that. Uh, these are vehicles that are needed because of the new positions added. Uh, but I will let Charlie uh, answer any questions. Um, one of those vehicles is a replacement vehicle for my animal control. Uh, that vehicle that we use it now was originally donated for Pioneer. It's got nearly 200,000 miles on it. The other one is going to be added for the added position you gave me in the detectives division and um, I'll, that's where that one will be used. Okay, thank you. Okay. Ms. Grego, do you have any, any comment? I just, I just have a question. Usually when we have that cover sheet, when there's <clears> a uh, um, business item on the agenda, it explains where the funds are coming from, and it didn't on these. It didn't do it on these two vehicles, and it also didn't do it for the Ford, uh, the other on item eight C. So I'm just wondering, Mike, was this budgeted for uh, at the beginning? Was this an unexpected expense, or was it planned? Okay, so these uh, vehicles are coming out of the fleet. Uh, Charlie, I think uh, Mike's going to go ahead and explain that. Thank you. Uh, this is out of the fleet budget, and uh, it has been budgeted for this year. Um, we will prioritize those as we move forward, depending on the finances, but uh, these are prioritized also in that projected budget are some uh, uh, pickup trucks for other departments that uh, we can do without. I think the police is a priority on this one. Okay, thank you. That's all I needed to know. Okay, Ms. Ogletree? No questions. Mr. Goodall? So is 
that the total price they're put together, or do we have additional cost to uh, put the vehicles together to be ready for the police department? Charlie, do you want to answer that? So th that's just for the vehicles. There is some added expense uh, for those two, although they're not, um, they're not quite as expensive as the patrol units to out there. Do you know what that dollar amount uh, might be, approximately? You know, I don't know exactly. The last truck that I did uh, was about $5,000. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Goodall? Okay. Mr. Williamson. Uh, the only question I have is for uh, Chief Glorioso. These vehicles, are they equipped um, with everything that you would think is required uh, to do the job uh, that you need them to do, drive train the way you want it, everything? Or, or is there items that you would add or think would be required to make your, make your job uh, easier, more effective? So these two vehicles are standard vehicles. They're not police equipped. However, for the job that they're gonna do, they're adequate. Uh, no, no further questions, thank you. Okay, and I don't have any further questions. Uh, could we uh, call vote, please? Yes. Item 8C, consideration of purchase of two 2020 police force interceptor utility vehicles. There again, that was a, another state contract and it was not necessary to go out to bid. And that amount was for the both vehicles together for $78,187.08. Could I have a motion, please? So, so, so. Second. Second. Council discussion starting with Mr. Matei. No questions. Ms. Grego. Okay, so what's what's your your questions? If that so, was the go ahead. So I can I can explain that the forty eight eight ninety five is a comparison pricing that I have to supply to the state to show what that vehicle would cost me out the door at a dealership. <clears throat> the other price is the price from the GSA pricing. Okay, that that really wasn't clear on that. I just couldn't figure out if we were getting a, a good discount on that. No, I have no further questions. Okay, Ms. Ogletree. Ms. Ogletree. No questions, and I look forward to going on a ride along. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Goodall. No questions. Mr. Williamson. No questions. Okay, I have no questions. Call the vote, please. Yes. Okay, on to uh, item nine, council reports. Uh, Mr. Matei, do you have anything to report? No, I have a couple of questions and they don't need answers now. I just want to put them out there. As we talk about coronavirus and all that kind of stuff, we need to think about Monument Lake and whether or not we should open it. I think that we need to allow and advocate for police, fire, and EMS to protect themselves as much as possible. I recently heard of a woman being arrested and it was intentionally coughing on the officers that were trying to arrest her. And we just need to have our guys protected to do our guys and girls. I agree. Be protected and do the job we're asked them to do. Okay. The state patrol recently just uh, I think had a thing today where they are asked to uh, revisit their enforcement index, not grab driver's licenses and stuff. Entertain the idea 
handicap of people is minimum and above all protect themselves. That's what I'm suggesting for our people. Mm -hmm. uh, clock, on the other hand, is commensurate with everything that the average adult is going on. They've canceled the early, the early learning center schools, but by the way, the governor just put out something where schools, no in, in school education is to happen to like the middle of April. That, that's the mess, the next extension deadline. Uh, COG is doing some things with regard to home health care. They are not going to be cooking meals for people who are dependent on them and taking them to Aguilar, Primero, and Segundo and such, but they will cook them and people can come in and get them. So uh, there's a lot going on with COG as there is with anybody else. I don't know a whole lot about what to do, but we're doing the best we can. Um, Johnson Controls, I think, coincidentally the neighbors happened to see a vehicle that said Johnson Controls and they don't want to lose track of that project and make sure that we're moving along with it and maybe somebody can tell us where we are with it at the moment. Uh, I'm happy to hear that we keep the fee so that we can use the credit cards for, for payments. And tomorrow, as I understand, is the deadline for receiving applications for the manager, city manager position. And I think we need to know where that stands and in light of the corona virus, what we can do, if anything different. And that's all I got. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Good suggestions. Ms. Crago. This is just has to do with the ins insurance industry because I don't know how much you all know about health insurance, but there's only X amount of days during the, the year that you can enroll for insurance if you do not have it now. But in light of the, the coronavirus, we got an email in our office today that they are going to do an, an open enrollment for two weeks starting the end of March, I think to the middle of April. When I get a definite uh, date, I will email it and maybe the chamber or somebody can pass it on because if somebody doesn't have health insurance and they're concerned, it might be a good, good thing for them. Other than that, um, you know, everything's, I'm in downtown Trinidad every day, all, all day, and uh, the foot traffic at first was doing really well and it's kind of slowed down a little bit. Um, but I, it's amazing to me that there's still people around town. And I have a suggestion to increase the funds for the city of Trinidad. I think all of us need to go to see if we can sell this video for a community. Human <laughs> 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 being out there might be the last this has been freaking hilarious. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ogletree? Um, I, I share some of the things that Councilman McKay, his concerns about um, where we are at the city manager situation. I'd like to know if we need to address that at all, given what's been happening the last few weeks. Um, but otherwise, I just, I, I'm pleased at how well everybody is responding to um, all the constraints on their life, and we need to encourage one another. It's going to be a rough time. Okay, Mr. Goodall. I agree with Councilman Matei on the Johnson controls. I was just thinking about asking for an update on that also. On my um, Facebook, I shared a, and also on the chat line here, a number for United Way has a COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund. Um, I'm going to get that number to Mike tomorrow. I don't know how we can get that out there, but they are um, assisting with bills, rent, and food for people that need it. So I'll get that to you, Mike, so we can get that out there how, uh, however needs to be. Um, one thing I did in the middle of the meeting, I grabbed a pair of my headphones and plugged them into my laptop. And it made one hell of a difference on me being able to hear. So if we continue doing this, it may be something everyone else will, uh, might want to try. Because when people are unmuting their mics, leaving their speakers on, that's where all the reverb is coming is through your speakers when you're speaking through your mic and then eliminating that. So it, I seem to be able to hear a little better. Okay. That's all I got. Okay. Mr. Williamson? I'm adding to the comedic value for Karen's video. Right there. Uh, inability 
done here. Um, one thing I, I just um, wanted to mention is I definitely uh, appreciate the inquiries as to the uh, status of the city manager search. I think that would be an important update to get. Um, secondly, I just wanted to encourage um, everybody that uh, obviously this is a very tough time we're going through just to consider people that um, are at higher risk, senior citizen centers and senior citizens, I apologize, and um, people with pre-existing conditions. I think it's important we all really educate ourselves as to protocols we can do to help them and help where possible. I mean, you know, if we take, um, say, groceries to senior citizens, it's important to know that um, you can actually cause the virus to be passed unintentionally by handing them contaminated items. So uh, um, just we should really be educated in the way that uh, we do that. I will yield my remaining time to uh, Councilman McKay. Go ahead, Ant. Yeah, thank you. It, it, it just occurred to me, that I didn't remember earlier, the governor has a, uh, a fund which is so far since like four o'clock raised two point eight million dollars to help people. Let's see, uh, governors help people who, due to business closures and, and, and the like, and people who are unable to work. It's help Colorado now dot org. Help Colorado now dot org, and and you can make contributions to a state administered fund that will be used to help folks that are displaced, employment, and all that kind of stuff. Did you get that? Got it. And, you know, and that's something, okay. and that, uh, and that's something that we may ourselves want to maybe try to do that would be a discussion I could have with Mike. Uh, I I got some information today of somebody maybe a business wanting to do a startup, uh, but I will keep uh, I'll keep you guys in tune with that once I hear from the company uh, as to what their intentions are. Uh, from my end, uh, I've been uh, along with Mike. We've been listening to the. Uh, daily reports that the Los Angeles County Health Department and uh, the emergency services have been putting together uh, the last few days and they're daily meeting at 10 a.m. and they have everyone uh, reporting uh, the city, the county, uh, the emergency uh, groups from Orfano and Los Angeles County, people that want to get off in the school districts, uh, sheriff's department, uh, uh, coroners, uh, all these different groups are reporting what they're doing, the hospital. So we've been listening in for the last uh, couple of two, three days to hear, to keep, to, or to have updates as to what's happening within our region. So that's that's good to hear. Mike, were you going to cover that bill grant for him? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say, and, and you know, it, at times like this, uh, you know, we've been noticing across the country that uh, mayors are being approached. Uh, you know, for comment, and today I got a comment, or uh, a, I got something from our newspaper because of the concern of the economic uh, problems that we could have locally here. If I could uh, offer some sort of encouragement to the local community and our business community, so I did put together a, a small comment, uh, you know, just, just telling people that you know this is something that the, the city of Trinidad has endured in the past downturn. Um, you know, and this too will, will pass at some point. So uh, we just have to stay encouraged. We have to try to support our work, our food establishments by taking out food where we can. Uh, it, and when this, it's going to be more important than ever when this thing does pass, that we as a community come together and support our local businesses. So that's kind of the premises of what I talked about, just to let you know. At this point, I'll go ahead and I'll turn it over to Mike for his report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, Johnson Controls, I'd like to just bring everybody up to speed. Johnson Controls has uh, issued RFPs for another uh, installer. They have somebody that they are vetting now. Um, they're ready to go again, but of course, with everything, uh, it's, it's put off. Uh, um, they have been busy correcting, you know, little glitches along the way and getting everything reading properly. Um, it's been awesome. We've uh, 
already helped a lot of people with high voltage um, water leaks. So it is moving forward and I will have more um, as soon as, I'm sorry, I'm getting a lot of feedback, I apologize. Um, more at a future date once we get geared up again because we don't want anybody going into people's houses to install meters or light pilots or any of such until this, this whole thing passes. So, um, I'm going to try and talk louder. I've got uh, quite the feedback. Can you hear me? Okay. You can hear so, Mike. So, uh, and the mayor, if you would chime in here, I sent out an email regarding the Southwest Chief um, and the Front Range Rail Commission. <coughs> They're uh, wanting to go forward with another Tiger, well, it used to be a Tiger grant, now it's a Build grant. Um, they, we sponsored the last one and communities along the, who are in the commission uh, all put in their match of 12,500. Um, it didn't pass the last time we were unsuccessful, but uh, they're asking us to sponsor again. And uh, I think I got pretty good consensus from council uh, that we will, uh, uh, move forward and, and sponsor that unless I hear different. Mayor, do you have anything to add to that? The only thing that uh, I'll have to say is I, I talked to Randy Grauberger, who's our director in, the, at the, at, in Denver, and uh, I asked him if there was going to be any additional money that we had to put in, and he said because of the last time that we were not successful, that that money is still there, so they're going to use evidently that fund to, uh, you know, to process this new application. So. Uh, we should not have any more capital only uh, with this uh, particular bill grant. And the reason why we're asking for it is because they want to try to get this in sometime in April and because of the current circumstances, uh, it was good that we were able to bring it to you tonight. So. so Mike's computer just died, so he's going to join you. Here <laughs> so uh, go ahead, Mike. No, that, that's all I had, Mayor, unless there's questions. Any questions for Mike? No? Uh, hey Les, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, do you have anything to report? I think there was a couple of questions that maybe you probably could answer that was answered. One was about the Monument Lake opening. I don't know if, what, what your thoughts are. And then also about the city manager's applications. Could you kind of comment? I will. The mayor, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first thing you, you said. But what What are your thoughts I, about I, I, approaching the Monument Lake, or do you think being that that's a, a business that we have, uh, you know, they're out on their own, that should be something they should control, or is that something that we should mention? You know, it, I, I see Councilman Matei nodding his head to the negative quite rigorously, and now Councilman could always join it. You know, Mayor, I, I think that that is something that I, I would like to talk to staff. I really would advocate caution and, you know, and, and really, you know, kind of plan on, on not going forward with the season for Monument Lake. Yes, that is Mr. Montrogon's, uh, uh, you know, I, I want to say baby, but, but really, the city says no. I don't, I think it would be cost of the the whole operations. I, I think there are a lot of considerations, though, that I would like to talk with staff before I really make a recommendation to, to council. Does that make sense? Uh, Mike has a comment on that. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Les. Uh, I'd also say that um, his restaurant would uh, is not uh, going to be able to be open here until the governor list, lifts any restrictions, and the governor also shut down all resort ski areas. So. Um, we may have that fall under the governor's orders, and so we'll see from there. Uh, the only other comment that I have on that particular matter is, uh, you know, we're now mid-March. Uh, you know, I, I guess, I don't know when the opening is, his, his schedule opening is. It could be that it could be timely that maybe if this thing, if, this coronavirus starts to taper off that he may be in time for him to be able to open. I think that's something that uh, I think just staff will have to work work through with him as well. 
I think, Mr. Mateo, you have a comment? Yeah, I do. Maybe what we want to do is see what the state of Colorado does with state parks. Yeah, I'm sure they have a lot of state Yeah. And uh, Rusty has there maybe a delayed opening, which is what I was just talking about. Uh, and I think that's a. Well, I think uh, staff will just you know, we'll talk with him about that. Okay, and that's about the second. This is the second question uh, about the uh, city manager's position. What's your thoughts? Mayor, I see the council did all this this morning. Go ahead. Just the word they did close the incline in Colorado Springs today until further notice. So if that's the direction it's going. Um, I did see that that happened today. The incline is closed down until further notice. So I think that's the direction it is probably going is closing of a lot of parks. Yeah. Okay. And so, Mayor and Council members, if I could please, as Councilman Matei pointed out, tomorrow is the deadline. Tomorrow the, the uh, close of business is the deadline for the city manager applications. I can tell everybody that in having spoken to Ms. Olensic today, um, we have received three applications so far. Now, I don't know who those are. I don't know, uh, you know what that consists of. I don't know who has submitted the applications. But thus far, we have received a grand total of three. Now, the, the city is receiving the applications as is the workforce center. And um, Donna checked the other day, and the uh, workforce center did not have any applications, so we, we have received the three. Um, and, and by the application, I mean resume and cover letter. Um, I would suggest Monday was going to be a work session for you, and on that work session was going to be Dana Crawford and someone else coming down to talk about the Fox Theater and other matters. I don't know what the likelihood of that going forward is, but I would like to recommend that we have an executive session in either event on Monday to discuss the city manager um, matter. My, my recommendation to you would be, even though these are extraordinary times, I think you should go forward with the, the applications. And I... You know, I, I'm not trying to hold your collective feet to the fire. I will just say that um, it, it, it's necessary for a lot of reasons to try and, and, and do this. And again, we've given all the notice we possibly can, um, essentially statewide, and that is the number of applications. So I don't think it really would be necessary to, uh, to increase the time period for more applications. Now, I say that, um, and, and want to emphasize again that I have not seen those applications. One, one other point I would like to make real quickly, and that is um, Donna was going to do like a kind of a, uh, a, a summary or, or kind of a point assessment <coughs> of the applicants. And that was going to be if you, were, if you were going to receive a lot of applications. So I don't think there's a need for that now. And incidentally, she will transmit those to all of you on Friday. So however many applications there are, you will get those and receive those on Friday. So um, Councilwoman Griego has a question, if I may. That you tell them to have a visual. <laughs> yes, it does. I'm here in my office, by the way, so I've got all kinds of visuals. The uh, question, you know, the governor said that we cannot, we cannot be in groups of over 10. So, right. an important matter like the city manager and the um, discussion, can it be an executive session? Right. Is it possible that we can have an in person executive session as long as we can work each other to six feet apart from each other? Right. Right. Sure. You know, I think that is how we ought to do it. And, and I was thinking about that um, on my way to sure. meet you here. And I, I think that's what we ought to do, and maybe have a couple of people at the dais, maybe one of you or me, like where staff says, and then have people interspersed in the audience, like one of the left front row or the right front row, and people at the back, and just talk loudly, seriously, and spread out. Yeah. I see you, Councilman Overture. No, that's right, and just speak loud. That's correct. Okay, so you guys are all doing funny things. 
You know, Les, uh, let me go ahead and speak up on that. And, you know, I agree with you. I agree with you that I think we should move forward. If, and if we wouldn't have gotten any applications, we may have a consideration. But I think in this particular case, we have some applications already in. I think that uh, I believe we should move forward. As far as being able to hold an executive session with, uh, you know, what we're, we're trying to do our part here to stay six feet apart, there shouldn't be any reason why we can't do that you know, in here in council chambers, we could do that easily enough. So I say we move forward with it and uh, let's see what comes up. Okay. So can we plan for this on an executive session on Monday, um, regardless of what happens on um, the work session? Yes, yes. if I may. Maybe the work session, but definitely executive session. Uh, Mike has a comment. <clears throat> if I may, I, I've, I failed to report that uh, Debbie Wagner and uh, was coming down on legislative uh, matters, and since the legislation is is shut down, we've canceled her, and the Fox uh, Theater update, we've canceled them also. So there is no work session agenda items. So we, did you everybody hear that? That there is no there are no work session agenda items. So we'll just have an executive session, a special meeting with an executive session, or however that works. Talk that over. Yeah. Okay, if there is no further uh, discussion for tonight, uh, uh, motion to adjourn. So okay, second. Second. Okay, call vote, please. Yes. Yes, and one had one final note to just to let you know is that uh, Tom uh, Murphy is videotaping this tonight on uh, YouTube, and he has talked about uh, going forward with uh, the future meetings if we have to have them in this manner that he'll be able to do the Trinidad Times TV that uh, he once did, and uh, they'll be able to have it at I guess designated times like they used to on Saturdays and other days of the week. So just to let the public know out there that that may be coming uh, to you guys as well. So uh, with that being said, uh, thank you guys. I know this has been a little bit of trying, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you guys. Have a have a good day. Bye bye. Okay.